This is a crazy one. This is where your budget went. Do you want to do the putting on? No, I don't, are you kidding? Of yes. course. <laughs> okay. Oh, of course. I am a very experienced so, at un being uncomfortable in yeah. costumes. We've got Andrew finishing the other two off in the UK, and then you guys, it's all. Oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> it's it's <laughs> freaky, isn't it? I, yeah, but, well, I, I also know that I'm looking at like $10,000 worth of bearings right away. <laughs> well, actually, they were, they were printed. So you 3D printed these bearings? Yeah. They were 3D printed. They, some of the pieces were 3D printed, then molded. But okay. most of them are 3D printed because Ridley liked that texture. I can't believe how, how well they move. You guys are insane. It's just... Um, when, when NASA does this, it costs millions of dollars. You know, I'm currently unemployed. I really could come work for you guys. <laughs> it is. Daddy, stop, stop. <laughs> and actually, the legs work, so if you put the whole thing on, you can actually move. So, that's not vacuum-formed. That's cast as well. That's all, cast. All the, all the visors are always cast, because you can't get the clarity. No, you can't. Because it gets too thick at the edge and then yeah. thin on the top and you end up with the specs. So they're all cast by CMA who... Who did, they did Prometheus. They did Prometheus. Yeah. So basically, um, once Tom drew it up, sent the model over to them, it takes them um, six weeks and they can never do it any quicker than six weeks and they won't. to do it. And they won't. They can start producing one every day and a half. Oh my God. When they do it. But then when they come out, they have to be polished by hand to get them up to the clarity and then they go back and then FB polish them again and then it comes out and then we get it all dirty and then we'll polish it again and then we'll go on camera. So, but. Oh yeah, I'll, here we go. Oh, I, won't, yeah. I won't let the weight go on top of you, but. You can, I can take it. Yeah? Oh yeah. This is, no one's ever made suits this beautiful no. before. Beautiful. It's unbelievable. It's noisy though. Is that a problem <laughs> with sound? I will, probably will be, but you know, we haven't told them. You have? <laughs> <laughs> Ixnay. Jackie, how, how, how do you start to approach something so futuristic and yet with such a long tail into the history of alien? There's got to be a tremendous amount of research that goes into this. Well, the whole thing about this um, was that Ridley did not want to revisit the Prometheus suits. He did not want to revisit the alien suits. So for us, um, it was completely start again at the drawing board. From scratch. From scratch. And not only with one, but with two different styles of spacesuits. So you have two totally different styles. We have the IVA, which is the interior or internal suit um, of spacesuit. Ridley didn't want the suit to be as detailed as the Martian, for mm -hmm. example, um, and he didn't want it as obvious as Prometheus. So he wanted simplicity, and that's what we've tried to give him. And with the helmet, we've learned so much about the helmets over the years. We are technological geniuses, In I terms think. of getting cl optically clear and... Optically clear, lighting the actors in the film with right. no other lighting keeping them alive. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they don't suffocate. Recorded speech, and certainly in Prometheus and um, in The Martian, there are, I mean, Prometheus, we had 11 monitors with real tech that meant nothing but real tech in them. And we now have, we've actually moved those monitors to the gloves in this one. Oh, okay. And then the second one is only worn by Danny McBride, and it is Ridley's passion, which was set decoration in um, Prometheus, he loved these set deck monsters. Yeah. Now, they're a great idea, but they were a technological nightmare because they are built like that. Right. There's no way a human being can even enter one, let alone move in it. So Michael Mooney, my amazing associate spacesuit designer, researched a huge amount of underwater Oh, right. Suits. Like the newt suit. Of the old-fashioned yeah. way. Oh, okay. And FB Effects, who are the best in the world, came up with the pivots that you will see downstairs on every single joint. But you have to have the ankles, the knees, the seat, 
everything is on pivots. It's uh, a on. thing of extraordinary genius. So you're having to balance the technological limitations of bearings and sizes and materials with the aesthetic requirements constantly. Yes. That yes. sounds like a hell of a dance. Well, it was a hell of a dance for them, and I take the credit. <laughs> <laughs> when you embark on something like this with Ridley, is there like a, a period of a day or a week that you and Ridley sit down with blank sheets of paper and just start sketching with each other? Um, no, Ridley does the sketching. Mm -hmm. And what I normally do is I go away and um, I work with a concept artist and with Michael. Working with a concept artist or two for a week or two, mm -hmm. I then go back to Ridley and like anything creative, has to be a process of elimination, yeah. really. Um, and he has very strong views. And then we make a prototype. And I remember him coming to Shepparton and just going, and we'd bought up all the fabric, it seemed, in the whole world <laughs> for these uh, IVAs. Yeah. And he went, mm, I think it'd be better silver. So, you know, these things happen. Yeah. You know, when he actually sees it and sees it in, uh, not in his mind or on, a, on the page, and we'd actually made, made up the spacesuit, then we were able to silverize it. Michael will tell you all about the silverizing. Is the process of working on science fiction radically different than working on something like Gladiator? I with, recognize um, the creative process. Oh. Yeah, but with a with a with a period um, film of any period, you can virtually go. Well, this is the reference. Right. Let's make them sky blue pink, or let's give them a, I don't know, purple turban or something mm -hmm. like that. With this, you have the world universe is your oyster. You so know. is that more fun for you? So it is. It's great fun. It's such a challenge. He basically wants the timeless look, and this applies to all the costume, just the whole civilian costume and in this film and in The Martian and in Prometheus as well. Things that don't, you know, jump out and look too... Call too much attention to themselves. Spacey. Too spacey. <laughs> I, I, everyone's always talked about Alien as being truckers in space. That it's that it's it's blue collar space. So blue collar. In actual fact, if you look closely, John Molo did create a uniform. Yes. It is a very casual uniform, and Ridley had no mind about you know the discipline of the uniform. They could be wearing anything, a bit grubby, Hawaiian shirts, which has been taken time and time yes. again <laughs> as the casual wear on board. Right. So right. he even he mentioned it. Um, this time round, and I went, well, just look at Val Kilmer in Red Planet. Right. Hawaiian shirt. Now, uh, when, you're, when you also make it, the costumes aren't, they're not new. They've, they've already had a history at the time they're showing up in the film. So once they're constructed, you go through a process of weathering them and, and beating them up. We have um, a huge, uh, wonderful art finishing, paint mm -hmm. finishing. I think the Americans call it art finishing uh, department and everything has to go through there. In actual fact, on this film, Alien Covenant, Ridley said, um, you know, everything would be just like issue, formal issue, so right. it would be new. And then we've got an extra dressed up in it, and he went, no, 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 got any oil, got any talcum powder? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have breaking down then, so it's the visual thing. It's just, yeah. it is a shortcut, but because he's so painterly, Anything that new is new pops. Yeah. So yeah. anything that's sort of like softer edges and broken down, it's totally acceptable. You don't question it. Right. You it know? just feels so like it's a it's real thing. Essential.